I'm in deepest South Dorset, which is about an hour and a half southeast from Homokus, almost on the south coast of England. And I'm with Kate Forrester, who worked with me and for me at Homemakers for a couple of years before coming here. And she's going to tell us a bit of her, her story and how she got into gardening and why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so basically I was a chef in London for 10 years, a private chef, and uh, I just started to find out more about what's going on with food production and I wanted to connect with that so I started growing a bit myself when I moved down to Dorset um, that was about four years ago um, and then I had this idea that I wanted to have a space that was for young adults and children families to come and see how food is grown but then learn how to cook because I feel like that's something that's been lost and it's not it's not being taught properly anywhere so as I started to grow vegetables I realized I didn't know anything and then I found I also dug one bed in my garden and realized it was really hard work so I found out googled how to do it without digging and then found you oh, yeah. and then uh yeah contacted you and very luckily I was able to come and volunteer yeah and yeah, uh, I learn remember properly. that first morning you turned up and you weren't quite the normal profile of volunteer <laughs> and clearly you're a very capable woman you know you're a professional chef aren't you you're, you're a good worker yeah you're used to <laughs> running a business and that kind of thing yeah a lot i'm used to a lot of hours so that's handy mm. for here yeah. Right. yeah yeah but in london <laughs> yes so yeah it was all about sort of getting out of london and reconnecting mm. with the land as well and mm. and that's where going to beautiful homemakers was mm. such an amazing eye-opening experience mm. Well, what I noticed was actually how you, well, you applied yourself and how interested you were in everything going on there. Mm. So you were picking it up, weren't you? Oh, how, definitely. How to grow the food. Yes. So, I mean, at what point did you think <laughs> you might maybe do it yourself? Um, well, I guess because I already had this, I don't know where the idea came from, to have a space to do it, um, I, I, that was always going to be a direction I hoped to go in. And then it was sort of a leap of faith, really. I didn't really anticipate and know how much work mm. it would be to do it on a big scale. It's very different from having an allotment or your own garden or helping at homemakers. Like it's, it's a whole different ball game because there are so many different factors that have to be considered and applied when you're taking on a strip of, of field. Like it's- So you, you just got this land, mm. um, you were putting out ideas about the local farmers yeah well it was to a local man called colin andrews who knew yeah who has tne the, the charity and uh yeah i met him through other people in the area and he really wanted this to happen like he remembers there being lots of market gardens in the ringwood area um so he was very keen to help me find a bit of land so he and he knows a lot of landowners around here so he's the one that sort of negotiated it um and we are leasing, so we don't own it. It's 15 year lease. And we've got four acres off a strip of, yeah, the rest of another farmer's conventionally farmed land. Four acres, yeah, that's um, 16,000 square meters um, in metric. It's a big block of land, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And like you are saying, it's not the same as gardening. No. So we're cropping, it's under an acre. We, it's mm. the, market, the market garden area is supposed to be an acre. We've got a lot of flowers. It's already got, huge. It is already I mean, huge. Homemakers, I'm cropping a third of an acre. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. And I want to do more because it's been really well received and lots of people are interested. They want to buy local food. That is the major yeah. thing we're getting through. Like it might not be... They might not understand the no dig, the soil health or the organic principles of not using any chemical fertilizers, pesticides, um, but they do get local. They understand that yeah. bit yeah. and they um, want to support that. You were saying you get the lifestyle bit coming, people visiting you because they, you're giving an example. Yeah, exactly. I think n most people haven't seen this they haven't been able to walk into a market garden there aren't that many market mm. gardens around especially ones that are open so because we're a community interest company so the whole thing is mm. that we do want to involve the community rather than it just being a um a, a normal limited company at business where you're just running it to sell you know there, there yeah. is the community aspect to it <laughs> but it is still you running it yeah it's i mean it still <laughs> has to you. be a business because yeah. it has to sustain itself like yeah. we can't you can't just rely on volunteers not at the yeah. moment you know it's, it's just not viable it wouldn't continue yeah, yeah. so i have to do it <laughs> okay. yeah and it's a lot of work 
安く買える。<笑><笑>今日来て、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私You're okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. I'm still doing it. Yeah. But the reality of it is very different. Like I said, it's like、mm. you, there's so many other factors that you have to think about about you o k n where w your water supply is, your entry, even are you fencing it? What are you going to put in、um, infrastructure wise? And that is something that we're still building on. That's not、yeah. something that can just happen if you don't have lots of money, which is the, where we're coming from. We did do a crowdfunder which helped with the polytunnel and various bits, but it's. It's taking a lot more time just to even when you're building no dig beds by hand, that takes a lot of time.、Mm -hmm. um, getting, your, you're getting your materials in, getting your, sourcing your compost, sourcing your wood chip, getting reliable sources, all of those factors. And then,、um, yeah, obviously, there's tons of things that we really want to be able to do. Like a nice composting operation. Like a really good composting <laughs> operation, not the nonsense、yeah. that we've got going on、yeah. at the minute, which is incredibly temporary and kind of embarrassing after obviously seeing a、mm. wonderful display of what yeah, composting bay can look like.、Um, so, that is something that we're addressing this autumn. We're also going to be using the shipping container to build off it a washing and packing area so that is sort of weather tight at the minute. We've just been lent a gazebo that's flapping in the wind and we get a lot、so、of wind. We is. We is me and Molly so, and、mm. Lisa. Lisa's now involved as well. So, me and Molly are friends that we both wanted to. Take a piece of land and, and, and sort of revive it, revive the soil. And, and Molly's doing the wildflower、mm. area. Because this soil was dead, wasn't it, when you came? Yeah, it's been ploughed for decades、mm. and it's been、uh, heavily fertilised and weed, kill. and weed killers.、Mm. Yeah, it's sad and you can see it. Like, and it's going to be a. Yeah, but look. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but this is, you know, this is what happens when you do、yeah. no dig as well. But, you、yeah. know, it's. It, it, Thick, but you can see, you can see、mm. when you're looking around, you can see、mm. the quality of the crops and certain、mm. things are struggling, or, or you know, they can get hit by aphids. Like the, the soil food web is not working, it's not functioning、mm. in it properly. But you are selling <laughs> very, very base level. I mean, it's、mm. not an easy soil for gardening. You know, this is no way this is market garden land originally.、Mm. And sand and gravel, isn't it? Yeah. Pretty it, much. Very, the free draining, I suppose, can work two ways. <laughs> <Yeah> . But <laughs> in the summer, like we've had,、yeah. it's just been, yeah. yeah, an extra worry. Yeah, I mean, this has been a really. Super dry summer, hasn't it? You really need to get a rain gauge. It would be so fascinating. We need to get a rain gauge,、yeah. and we also need to get another massive thing is we have to get a proper irrigation system. That wasn't something that we got. You're watering everything in here by hand?、Mm -hmm. is yeah. That mostly you personally? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah,、mm -hmm. we shouldn't be doing that, and it's、yeah. time consuming.、Um, yeah. But I've learnt so much. You know, it's all、mm. these sorts of things that、yeah. you're going onto new land and you haven't done it before.、Mm. You don't always factor in absolutely everything. Because you found a really good source of. Horsemanier? Yes. Horsemanier? Yes. And tons and tons. Tons and tons. Yeah. Hundreds of、and、tons. <laughs> that's what's made it possible. Absolutely. And that's the main source of fertility. It、so、is.、Far. Yeah. And we've used seaweed. Yeah. Oh, what?、Well, you go down to the sea? No, I've got seaweed, organic seaweed feed. Yeah. We've、oh, used,、okay. yeah, used that on, in here, basically. And the wood chip, you can get hold of it? Yeah, wood chip. There's various <coughs> different、um, suppliers、yeah. around here. There's tree management company and there's tree menders up the road as well.、Mm -hmm. So there is, yeah, we're right by the new forest.、Mm -hmm. And obviously, yeah, there's lots of. No perennial weeds, so that's easier. No perennial weeds, <laughs> that's something. But we've had our fair share of annuals. I've <laughs> <laughs> seen quite a few. Ground salt. Ground salt. Fat hen. Fat hen, mayweed.、Oh, mayweed. Mayweed, which, yeah, took over a lot of the sort of wildflower in the orchard. So we've、mm -hmm. put in A brand new orchard, mixed fruit orchard that's over、mm. 140 trees. We also put in a new hedgerow, which is. And nearly all of those trees have survived. Nearly all of them have survived. Yeah, I mean, that's a credit. That's a dry spring and summer. Yeah, I mean, there's some sort of magic going on. I don't know. <laughs> I don't really、and、know you've how. You've got a hedge, yeah? We've, We've got a hedge. hedge. 13、yeah. different species, native mixed hedgerow.、Mm. Yeah, and, and most of that <laughs> survived as well. So. That's all extra time. You know, once you get into your second year, at least that's one less job, isn't it? Yeah. So you, 
That's what I'm saying. You've done so much. You put out this polytunnel. Yes. In windy conditions, even. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it took a long time. It took about a month for it to actually get... We had the frame, but then we didn't, couldn't get mm -hmm. the plastic on for a long time mm -hmm. because of the wind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a lot of different things, like getting even the fencing put mm -hmm. in, which is obviously mm -hmm. necessary for... We've got a lot of deer here. Oh, wow, this uh, is deer-proof. Mm, yeah, it's deer-proof mm -hmm. and rabbit-proof. Apparently, there was, a, there was a gap. Rabbits have got in a couple of times, but um, generally we're mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. The only problem now is birds. So, yeah, partridge. Oh, partridge. <laughs> partridge like to just pull things up, it seems, for fun. Yeah. Just have a look. And that's partridge put down by gamekeepers for, for shooting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. unfortunately they can fly over and in. So, yeah. yeah, and then pigeons, but we haven't had too much, but pigeons like the young brassicas. Mm. So... Mm. Yeah, that's another thing, like we had to, it's getting, it's on this scale, getting enough netting. Mm. Found mm. that scaffold netting is like yeah. the cheapest alternative to EnviroMesh. We, right. had, we had a bit of a nightmare with the fleece that was, wasn't UV yeah, stable. Yeah, you're non-UV fleece. Yeah. Uh, really unlucky. It was all broke apart and flew everywhere in the wind, so that was another factor. And then, yeah, and even, even just getting enough hoops, we've been given mm. some of the, like, uh, water pipe stuff now mm. as well, but mm. get, that's expensive, you know, yeah. all these things mm. really add up. You going to do another crowdfunding? Yeah, I think we probably will. Mm. <laughs> we kind of need to. We want to build more beds, be and we want we want to expand the actual growing area because there's a there is a real demand for it here. We we could be yeah. growing so much more. So, Kate, how are you selling? Is it easy? Um, yeah, it's been a lot easier than I anticipated. Mm. Actually, uh, it was a bit slow to start with. So we're doing CSA share veg boxes. We've got about twenty five now, which is enough for me because I'm basically doing it on my own and any You're more in the first everything. year <laughs> picking everything yeah, within an time, inch eh? of its life yeah exactly yeah. and it takes time um that a lot more time than I realized that's a massive learning curve um and uh, we're also selling in a local farm shop to a restaurant who's got a green Michelin star and they're brilliant and to a, a local private chef as well and then to the bakery. So lots of little bits going to different places. They, um, they come and collect? Or yeah, they, mainly yeah. come and collect. Uh, Molly does a couple of deliveries to a different area where she lives. Um, but yeah, it's been, there's more of a demand than I thought there would be which is fantastic hence why we kind of want to do more so that yeah, we can yeah but i mean do you ever work it out and you're picking and the price you're selling is pounds per hour is it yeah i mean i haven't okay? but this is no it's not and that's that's the reality of it isn't it and and that is a big conversation because there is a whole yeah what do we what do we value what do we see as important and it's even quite funny from selling some flowers how much more people value a bunch of flowers oh, mad, eh? than a bunch of carrots that's yeah. going to sustain you and yeah. fuel your life it's yeah. yeah it's very different and uh eye-opening but what we're noticing is a huge amount of people coming here who are interested in having this conversation and want to know where food's coming from. They want to know about the food system. They see that it's broken. They see that people are getting sick from it, mm -hmm. that supermarket food doesn't have the nutritional value that it should, and that they want to get back to, back to nature and back to grounding again and, and, and thinking about our lifestyle. But, but you, just from your lifestyle here, it's working out how you can make that pay yes. <laughs> so that you can carry on and inspire these other people. Absolutely. I mean, is there a way of could might you run us some courses? Yeah, something? that's it. I think that's the other thing we're learning is well, we already had plans for that initially. It was mm. we haven't been able to this year because obviously we're setting up, but next year to be able to host courses about how the food is grown, but then how to cook with it. Like you know that that mm. deep connection that everybody needs. It's all it's all well and good being able to grow great veg, but if you don't know how to cook it yeah. or what to do with all this when you have a glut, then that's you know you need that that skills. So that's well, what, I've got great memories of the food you cooked. Haven't yeah. you? <laughs> you. And you want to have children involved as well? Yeah, that's it. We, uh, I've noticed that when friends have come with their children, how excited <laughs> the kids get about seeing something growing in the ground that they've never seen before and that's that's really like inspiring and so i i mentioned they vandalize the garden well this is it so <laughs> we're talking about having a separate area that's just sort of kid-friendly picking mm. zone so they can come and experience it and it doesn't matter like you know if they mm. they wreck it a little bit because mm. it's not the stuff that we have to sell so i like what you said something about like pulling out the carrots and the mother said you never eat a carrot at exactly home. <laughs> you know they're so excited because it's completely yeah. novel yeah yeah and you could develop that 
line about the nutrition from the soil microbes exactly so that's another thing that people are coming here and wanting to you know they're, they're wanting to know how things grow and then soil definitely has to come into that because mm. the soil health is everything that's yeah. how we get nutritionally yeah. like dense food um so yeah it's all so about we're, education we're getting into quite positive territory here. Mm, yeah <laughs> i mean can you see yourself you know if you've got a a, a good vision of the future. I it, do. You, you've talked a lot about the difficulties. Yeah, I do. I definitely see. I keep imagining, you know, each year and how it grows, especially you know with, with the orchard as well and the improving soil. Hopefully, that mm. that's just we're just going to notice the difference um, in the crop quality, um, and also we just. I, I definitely want to see this project through. As, as I said, we've got this fifteen-year lease and we we're already getting so much positive feedback mm. in so many different ways mm. and that is really rewarding um and it's 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 carrying me through and sure it's not financially really successful yet but we know that there's loads of different things that we can do on site molly doing courses having harvesting days with the apples preserving days all sorts of different things that you can do to add value instead of just seeing the land as one thing there's mm. there's many different things we can do with it fantastic well i yeah. congratulate you from the bottom of my heart oh thank and you it's been a pleasure to share this conversation <laughs> yeah thank <with> you, you. <laughs>